Hi, I'm Aaron and I'm from Limitless Corby. So, recently I've been struggling a bit with prayer and this is manifested mainly in two ways. Um, with laziness um, and overcomplication and there's lots of reasons like that we can struggle with prayer so one could be laziness as I've said, overcomplication as I've said, one can be when we come to this place of prayer we don't know where to start, we can be discouraged in our prayers and actually again when we come to this place um, we can be distracted and a lot of the time I find that we actually want to pray that there is this desire within us to pray, but we don't do it. <laughs> and there's this um, this proverb, Proverbs 13.4, I'll read it to you. And it says, lazy people want much, but get little, but those who work hard will prosper. And this desire within us for wanting is so good. It's so good, but we need to let that desire to push us forth into activity, into action, and actively seek God. Not just let our laziness take control. For that, we're not going to get much. We're going to get little. We might want this more e- intimate. We might want this more deeper relationship with God. But the first step is actually letting this hunger, this desire within us, push us forth into activity. And the cool thing about that, we will prosper. That hunger will grow within us and we will get more th- than we could ever expect and I was looking at what Jesus said about prayer and I came to Matthew 6 6 and I'll read that to you as well Um, and it says when you pray go into your room close the door and pray to your father who is unseen the first thing Jesus expected was well he expected us to pray (laughs) when you pray when you pray it wasn't if you pray it was when you pray and he had this expectation of us to actually go and pray. Um, the context of this, this was on the Sermon of the Mount. This was not to the select few. This was not to the, um, the religious people. These were to the crowds. These were to the everyday people. These were to the people who were present. And we are called to pray. Not just sometimes, but we have or if. We are called to pray. So that's the first thing. God expected us to pray. Jesus expected us to pray. The second thing, he says, go into your room and close the door. We are called to get away from those distractions. And I feel that half the battle is actually getting away. Um, a lot of the time I can just feel like <laughs> I can't really be like bothered or, oh, I can do this instead of pray. And like... It's not, I find that most of the time it's me just actively go, going into my room, going into a place of away from people and praying. And then I feel that's half the battle. And it's just, it's, it's, I think most of the time it's just the prospect of praying, which puts us off. But then when we actually enter into prayer, it's just, it's just something, it's just easier than we could. We, we expect these, we have these um, ideas which don't quite add up, but he calls us to get away from distractions. Jesus did this regularly. Um, so before he chose the 12 disciples, he went into the mountains and prayed. Um, before he walked on water, he went into um, the mountains and prayed. Um, before he started his public ministry, he went into the wilderness and prayed and fasted. Before he went on the cross, um, he went He went beyond his um, disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane and prayed. Uh, Jesus constantly got away from the crowds, constantly got away into just him and God, um, getting him away from these distractions um, and just um, prayed. I I read in um, Pete Gregg's How to Pray. Some people do struggle um, to just stay still and pray, but we're we're not this place of solitude. Jesus went out and he was walking. He was walking. He was climbing mountains as he prayed. So even just like... um, walking to the shops and praying, um, walking to school and praying, whatever, or running and praying, swimming and praying. It doesn't have to just be um, in the room. It's good, it is good just have them times of stillness, but it's also, we can pray in activity as well. So one, Jesus expected us to pray. Two, to get away from those distractions to help us to pray. And three, to pray. (laughs) Pray to your Father who is unseen. I love the simplicity of it. Pray to your father. 
We are called to enter into a relationship as father and son or daughter. <laughs> um, but it's just simple, absolutely simple, but so powerful. And prayer at its simplest is a conversation with God. You've probably heard that loads. But it's asking and listening and sometimes just being with God <laughs> not even say anything but just that recognition of he's He's with me he's in me Galatians um, it talks about God being in us and we have this opportunity to pray every day <laughs> we have this opportunity to pray for our struggles what what's occupying our minds um, to give him praise um, in our every days to seek his ways um, I love him Proverbs 3, it talks about um, trusting the Lord with all your heart, um, um, seek his will in all that you do and he will make your path straight. And when we just acknowledge him, when we actively seek him, what he can do, and we are so blessed, we are so blessed to be able, it's like at the biggest privilege but also our greatest source of power we have so much power because we have access to the direct throne room of God when we pray and by we're missing this huge opportunity nations can be changed in our prayers God uses our prayers to change things but first of all we need to pray <laughs> if we want to see change we need to pray if we want to go deeper in our relationship with God we need to pray we need to get away from distractions pray to our father not over complicating it so there is power in the simplicity of prayer so if you're struggling I, pr- I, reckon that, I recommend right now right now go to your room <laughs> get away from the distractions and pray to your father in heaven who is unseen